Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. Uh, you already had two speakers, uh, Harun and uh, Brother Nasser, one representing MCB and the other representing uh, British Muslim Heritage Center. So I want to welcome you as, of course, a member of parliament first, because you are sitting in my constituency. So welcome. And the other two, as you heard in the introduction that uh, I am founding trustee of the British Muslim Heritage Center, and currently I'm a patron, but with MCB, I'm also a founding member, and I served as assistant secretary general. So these are two amazing organizations which have been part of my life, and they are also doing an amazing work uh, for the Muslim community, for the British society, and I want to congratulate them, actually, and I hope, inshallah, with events like this, that they will improve uh, their capacity, their ability, and do more and more work that we need. The subject you got here today is people not building. And if I reflect on this whole idea, and then one thing is very clear. Building in this concept of a mosque is of course very important. It's important and that's why when the Prophet did the Hijra, the very first thing which was done was to establish a mosque. And even today, if you go around the Muslim world, particularly from the sea, the first thing you will always see on the land is a mosque. It's the same concept which is used throughout, that the mosque actually is pretty fundamental for the Muslim community. It is, has a heart is to the body. And then the body, you can see it has a society. And the blood cells that run through, heart which gives energy and everything, is me and you. So both are important. Making sure that we have mosques that actually does do their job, and the Muslims who participate in those mosques actually then participate in the society. And this is also why we say that Allah's Sakina lands in the mosque and then spreads into the neighborhood. And the importance of the individual is, can also be measured from the fact that the honor of a Muslim is holier than Kaaba. And that's why Prophet also said that even if you're doing a tkaf in Masjid Navi, that there is a need, then you are able to come out and meet that need. Hadith Qudsi, on the day of judgment, Allah will say that I was sick, you didn't visit. I needed clothes, you didn't. All that connection of human need. And the person says, well, Allah, you don't need all this. And Allah said, yes, the fellow human being. So again, all these things actually takes you towards this very idea that we need to make sure that the mosques are used for this wider concept. If you look then in the concept in Britain, you have 2,000 or so mosques and for three million Muslims. I don't know about your experience, but I regularly visit different mosques on Friday in Manchester. And most of my Fridays are in Manchester. Every mosques I visit, they're all packed. But are they always packed? You know it, and I know it. That's not the case. And if you then develop the concept 
what does Allah give us? Allah says it's tijara, it's a business. And one of the brothers was speaking to me and he said, he's a businessman, and he said, you know, I don't use my resources as 10%. I use them for 100%. This is how you can get the better return, not by using 10%. So we have to then examine ourselves, how come we've got 2,000 mosques, and yet this resource is only being used 10%. 90% we're not making most of it. And this is the challenge that we have. How do we make sure that we turn this? And then you see, you'll see the amount of work we can do. And I was looking at the British Muslim Heritage Center, their figures last year. On average, 10,000 per month people are coming here. Well, I know this is not the case of every mosque. So we need to make sure that we look at these good examples and we need to duplicate them in all mosques. MCB are doing some good work, but I said to you earlier on that I'm the founding member. I know their limitations too, the limited resources they have too and the challenge which are out there in society as a politician, day on, day out, that's what I'm dealing with, issues. And if you look at the example of Islamophobia, all the effort MCB is making, still the Conservative Party is actually not holding an inquiry. But had we been organized better, had we been organized better, I can assure you, there is no way any political party can ignore you. Because end of the day, as in the Muslim concept of tijara, the politicians and the politics, they also keep their eyes on the number game. They also want their currency of a politician is votes. So if you are organized, they will never ignore you. But again, I think the mosque can play an amazing role in this. Because what do we want from a mosque? We want a mosque which actually builds that capacity, which allows us to really go out and make the society better. That's the goal. So to finish off with, you know, there's a couple of things I want to say as well from my experience. And that is this. You know, you often hear the difficulties, whether they are here in Europe or the rest of the world. And you often hear on Friday, and many others who are concerned, and they say, Ya Allah, give us Salahuddin bin Ayyubi. And if it's the Indian subcontinent, Ya Allah, give us Muhammad bin Qasim. And I always think, it's for us to produce Muhammad bin Qasim. It is for us to develop Salahuddin bin Ayyubi. And that will only happen if you use the mosque correctly. And we can. And that's why I leave with you this. You know, I was reading the qualification of an imam in Turkey during the Khilafat period. And you look at the list of the qualifications. Absolutely incredible. I would be surprised if a single imam in Britain can fulfill that requirement. So he talked about their, his appearance, uh, his physical condition, his knowledge of Islam, his knowledge of other faiths, all those different things, qualifications he required to be an imam. So that's an area we need to concentrate on. And the other area which I think we need to concentrate on. You know, I've been doing this work for at around 30 years, from college, university societies, to the mosque and others. Sister stood up, that means my time's nearly up. 
I got the message. <laughs> <laughs> and the message was, is this actually for you? You know the population, 50, 52% is women, our sisters. What are we doing when we neglect 50, 52%? If you sit exam and you lose the 52% and you enter the exam, the best you can do is to pass. So that's what you need to do. And the third bit is strengthen the team who run the mosque. It's not one man show or one person show. It's the team. And we have an example in Hizra Mosque in Manchester. A good, strong team is amazing. You know, they, were, they won national award. They won pride of Manchester for the work that they do. Here, British Muslim Hattie Center, they've got the Queen's Award for the work and for the community, which is given for the voluntary organizations. So let's concentrate on our young people, let's work on integration, and let's use the mosque to upskill our people. Thank you very much.